feeding to the models that's been placed before us and as long as we keeping that um, the, the ability to collect money from from ratepayers to pay for these capital items so we would have we would be paying this bill in one form or another that's what they're looking at whether it's a USDA loan or whether it's a councilmanic bond right they're, they're look only at looking ability at your to ability it. to repay it yeah you do have upper limits though for future uses or current capacity for mm -hmm. which you could do a general obligation bonds and councilmanic bonds themselves without going back to the public okay. so you would be yeah. using up some of that capacity and, the, and that was my concern it was there there is a capacity there's a there's a a number there somewhere that we would work within. We just took $2 million of that capacity. David? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Jennifer, before I say anything, I'm, I'm, I'm on my second round here. Okay, yeah. Um, I just wanted to point out that um, according to David Scott's email, uh, we already have outstanding bonds, uh, downtown revitalization project, water sewer refinance, refinancing bond of 2005, and two LIDs. So we have to wonder what, you know, do we really still have the uh, bond rating that is listed, the A plus, I believe it is? Yes, it is. Yes. We I still have that yes. even after all of these yes. bonds and the fact that we're still paying on these? Point of inquiry. Um, you mentioned those bonds, but all those bonds are not connected to the water sewer. Correct. Those bonds are connected to different revenue streams. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, you have to, I think you really have to look at each revenue stream differently in regards to their bonding capacity. Okay. Does that make sense? It, it does. And if that's the only way, if that's the only criteria that we're being judged on as far as our bonding mm -hmm. limit, is what you're saying, Rod? No. Paul shaking his head. Now, the, the, the way that a bond rating agency is going to look, they're going to, certainly going to look at both the funding source and all of those bonds, especially the LIDs, those are not general obligation bonds of the city. But they will, is that correct, RJ? Um, I was questioning. The LID bonds are not general obligations of the city. They're enforceable essentially as property taxes are enforceable against the property owners who entered into the local improvement district. Mm -hmm. the, but there is an overall bond rating for the city and there are, there's an A plus rating and a double A minus rating mm -hmm. for two different kinds of bonds. But the, the A plus rating is, is really for, for general obligation bonds of the city, is that correct? Revenue bonds. Re A plus rating on revenue bonds. On revenue bonds. And double A minus on general obligation. I have one more thing, I'm sorry. Um, as far as the impact on the ERUs, um, I have the uh, information in the packet talking about the $2 million 20-year 3.25% um, versus the 40-year 3.25%. And um, I'm just curious to know what the impact on each R ERU would be with a council manic bond. And would it be similar to the other 20-year? It would be USD alone. The interest rate is higher. Is, I would is, think it would be higher because it's still based on the total payout of the life of the instrument itself. Okay. It would be a, just a little bit higher. If you take uh, the three hundred dollar, three hundred thousand dollar difference, is that correct? Correct, Mr. Shoemaker. And you, um, you know, that was based on Trevor's original figures. I think right. Still, I, think they still, I think they still hold. Okay, and you, you know, factor it out the life of the loan for twenty years it doesn't seem like it would be that much am and i correct anybody it, have a calculator it's also <laughs> a function of the overall mm -hmm. um utility program but the rates we, we've already gone through this study and this two thousand dollars 
is going to have to be factored into the rates because it wasn't originally factored into the Correct. study. Correct. So the rates will have to increase more than likely anyway. There's the potential for that, but not necessarily. But certainly intuitively, if you, if you had a capital program that was for X dollars over a, a specific period of time, uh, and then you increase the principal for that and finance that, you're going to need a little mm -hmm. bit more each month from all of the contributing rate payers mm -hmm. in order to meet that obligation. Mm -hmm. But also understand that the uh, capital plans are living documents in the sense that some of the timing changes we're projecting out into the next decade uh, or later in this decade when some of those projects will happen. Some of the costs can be different. It's a, it's a planning tool to guide your rate analysis <clears throat> and to guide your rate policies. So it's, you can't conclusively say for sure that it would increase the rates, and it, it is just as likely that the rates wouldn't have to change from the current uh, model that was in front of you, particularly in the short term, given some of those adjustments. And I, I believe that staff's already identified for the next round, as FCS works with us, some potential adjustments that do some minor delays to some of the different projects, but I can't remember those uh, specifics. So it's the, sort of all of that context that you know, we're saying that the impact to ERUs, we believe, would be minimal, but we can't say that it would be nothing. No, I'm finished. Actually, I will chime in. Thank Please you, Dave. <clears throat> um, I just want to say that I, I uh, really do take into consideration what my fellow council members have spoken about tonight, and I do think they do really have issues here. However, I, I do feel like this US, USDA loan, when we look at it on the face, is by far the best, makes the best fiscal sense for us. And um, so I, I do support that. Although, given the situation, I do understand the concerns that you have. Um, and for the um, audience here, I mean, I, I want to make sure that they understand that this does not commit us, this action tonight to using the USDA loan. It just moves forward. And furthermore, uh, currently the staff has a, has a um, target and they don't believe that we'll fully utilize that $2 million. They believe that the costs will come in between 1.2, 1.4 million. So we wouldn't uh, be fully obligated to utilize the, the entire $2 million in either format that we choose to um, finance it. Okay. Anybody else? I know there's more. Too many first time, right? Okay. <laughs> Second time around. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Um, I've heard a couple of things here. Uh, but one of, them that, one of them that intrigues me is that the, the difference between the two bonds, or the two revenue uh, sources for this project, which we need to do, is $300,000. That's the savings that we anticipate making by doing this project. So that, that frees up, I think, some, uh, some money to use the councilmatic bond, uh, which will come in at less than the 300000 for some of the reasons that Councilman uh, Russell and others have mentioned. Um, the second one, uh, I heard the point others will take the stimulus funds. Uh, I don't think that makes it right, but I would also say that there are people at the state and local level all over the country who are refusing to take stimulus funds. Uh, 